Hello everyone and welcome back to Mr. Moves Models. Uh, today is going to be a quick inbox review of uh, a kit. Um, I know previously on the channel I said that I wasn't really going to go down the route of doing uh, massive amounts of inbox reviews um, and I've had a little think about it and decided actually I really enjoyed doing a couple that I've done already and secondly um, in my stash of fairview kits which haven't been reviewed video wise anyway um, there's plenty of sort of um, should we say uh, views on different forms around the place that, that's fine but sometimes it's about actually having a look inside a video and just having somebody ramble on about it I find it's quite helpful and it comes down to buying a kit you know if I want to buy the 70 second scale uh, tornado it's nice to see how the Ravel one compares to the Airfix one um, and what people think about it so what I've decided to do is have a quick review of the various kits I've got in the stash and today we're starting with this little beauty here uh, this is the uh, 172 scale uh, sword harrier uh, it's a trainer version it's the mark 2 slash 2a slash 4 slash 4n um, quite a nice kit and it came into stash a few weeks ago so what I'm going to do is move the uh, move the, uh, the camera around point it down at the bench uh, and crack it open and sort of go through look at the sprues look at the decals uh, and everything else that's in there and the instructions and just ramble and let you know what I think about it so um, I'll pop the cameras around and I'll see you once the camera's in the right position okay guys right so this is the sword Harrier T2, well T Mark II, 2A 4 4N in 1 to 7 second scale. Its kit number is uh, SW72098. Um, I got this kit for, I think it's about £14.50 off the internet. Um, on the back here, you can see we've got the four schemes it proposes. So, um, the T Mark II from number four squadron at RAF Gutslaw in Germany, uh, 1977. The T Mark II A uh, of uh, 20 squadron Gutslaw, 1974. Um, Harrier T Mark IV N from 899 uh, Naval Air Squadron, uh, and these are special markings uh, which celebrated the 50th anniversary of the unit in 1992. And we've got here. Uh, T Mark IV from Number Four Squadron, uh, which is RAF once again, and that was during the AMF, which I'm not sure what that means. The AMF, I've checked that out. Exercises in uh, Norway, 9th January 1981. So, two of them uh, in dark sea grey, dark green over light aircraft grey. Uh, one which is all over, I'm hazarding a guess, medium sea grey, um, and one which is a dark sea green dark grey, of light aircraft grey with a white distemper over the top um, and I've seen some reference photos of these and they were absolutely battered in the conditions so that's quite an appealing uh, one as is the uh, the, um, the Mark IV N so let's get into the box, it's a side opening box not the best quality box sword but nevertheless it does a trick right. so in a receivable bag here we have uh, the instructions, um, the sprues and everything else. So let's get everything out and have a quick look through it. If it will come out. There we go. It's coming. It's coming. There we are. Right. So we have uh, Clear sprue here, instructions, I'll have a look at that in a second, and then we've got a little bit of resin uh, just aside here, uh, and two sprues of plastic. So I'll have to put those in the middle. Let's start with the instructions and decals and some photo etcher. So just move these out of the way. There we go. Plop, plop. So instructions, they come in a paper booklet, just normal A4, no colour. On the front here we've got uh, some blurb about uh, the history of the two-seater Harriers, um, saying how it provided a system conversion trainer for pilots moving on to the uh, V-style aircraft, um, 
and it had a longer step cockpit, extended rear fuselage, enlarged tail to counter out the enlarged nose uh, compared to standard Harrier, blah blah blah. Um, and it goes on to talk about uh, various histories of, of them. Um, the two seater first flew in 1969 and entered service uh, in Royal Air Force as the T Mark II in 1970 uh, and then it upgraded to T2A, the T Mark IV afterwards um, when it had the uh, laser range and Mark Target Seeker, that's the fair and snoopy nose on the front of it, etc. 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 So um, interesting anyway moving on uh, we've got a sprue map here uh, with the various parts so two sprues the clear sprue uh, some resin and uh, some a little photo etch sprue um, and the first step here uh, as with most aircraft is uh, starting on the cockpit so here we've got um, the instrument panel with a bit of photo etch here going in uh, and the cowling over the top of it and some more photo etch for the um, for the uh, the HUD, there we go. I'll try and bring you in, um, and then we've got the rear seaters panel here, uh, instrument panel which is coming on. Um, again, with the cowling and the HUD, uh, the bang seats, which have got quite a bit of photo on it, so they should come up quite nicely. Um, and then we're working on the tub here, which again has got some nice photo etch. Uh, the nose wheel well which is seems like quite a complicated way of doing it um, but it's there nevertheless the fan blades uh, coming into the back there um, this here is the what's that 51 I'm going to say that is going to be the main of the couch gore and this here is going to be for the uh, air brake for the resin and then it shows us popping them into the into the fuselage here um, and then Popping the copy tubs into the front of the fuselage. We've got a bit of sidewall detail here, which will probably come up quite nice with a bit of detailing of wash and dry brush. Um, and then starting to button it up and getting the air intakes in, and they look like they could be a bit of a pig just by the look of it. Um, these limited run kits don't have um, don't have uh, what call it, locating tabs um, and. I'm not sure where the fit there is going to be great, but nevertheless, it's there. A um, bit more photo etch here just at the back. Nice little touch. Um, Colour call outs, we'll come back to in a minute. Then we're working on the, uh, the exhausts, and they look to be one piece, which is nice. Um, two piece wing here coming in on top. Um, and then it's slotting the vertical stabilizer in and the horizontal stabs. And here we've got different um, different options depending on the variant that we're doing. This here with the radar warning receiver will be for the, uh, the T Mark IV, I think I'm going to say. Just have to check that in the instructions. Uh, but without, certainly going to be for the, the first generation T Mark II. Um, and here we've got the options here. It says T Mark II, Mark IIA, uh, and the Mark IV and Mark IVN. Um, so that's that. We have got um, the main main landing wheel here, uh, main gear, and at which point that goes in also, and that's the nose wheel, uh, which looks quite nicely detailed. Um, this bit here could be a little bit of a, a nightmare once again with no lathe locating tabs. Uh, it's going to be difficult to get the alignment and to get that to hold. So super glue is probably going to be your friend. Um, here we're dropping the main gear in and the uh, air brake um, my gut instinct on Harriers from every single time I've done a Harrier um, well from what I've seen and what I'm doing or what I did on my GR1 uh, I won't be doing it on GR3 but what I will do on all those Harriers is skip this part get the outrigger wheels in get those nice and uh, nicely fitted in with a nose wheel sit it down on those delicately uh, and then Get this in with a bit of Tamiya white glue, which gives you a bit of time to play around with it, uh, and then you can adjust the height so all the gears, all the landing gear wheels are touching the uh, the ground. Because if not, you can end up with this being too high when these go in and hand faff. Here we've got gun pods or uh, strakes as an option, um, and here it's showing pylons going in with fuel tanks. Um, you could bomb 
this up, same again on the, uh, the other side, fuel tanks in it, see the canopy come together with some more photo etch. Um, and then it's showing here, say canopy uh, uh, and photo etch, uh, and then here we have got um, we've got stencil markings for the Harrier. Uh, it's going to be quite generic. Uh, it's quite a few on there, to be honest. So actually keep us busy. And um, stencil markings again on top of the aircraft and underneath the aircraft. So enough to be going on there with stencils. Um, Armament wise, I do believe that the uh, the trainer versions of the Harrier were fully operational, so they could carry a war load if you wanted to um, put it with that. Right. So here we are. I've got um, paint schemes, decal schemes, and paint schemes. So this really attractive one here, which is the um, the T mark for uh, for number four squadron up in the Arctic. So it's a light aircraft grey underneath, dark sea grey here. Uh, dark green on the sides here and then a white distemper over the top and that looks absolutely stunning um, but probably quite a nightmare to uh, actually do um, to get a realistic effect you probably want to mask off the green with like um, putty or something like that city putty or, or um, blue tack and then probably freehand the white over because it seems to be a bit rougher underneath it we've got the um, Mark II from number four squadron, uh, RF Gutzlaw in Germany from 1977. And this is quite a nice scheme, once again, it's very traditional. Um, it's got some sort of distemper markings here, some white markings which look quite dirty on top of the wing and on the strip of uh, vertical stab. A little bit of orange on the back, just bring a bit of colour into it. And then on the other side here, we've got the T Mark IIA uh, from number 20 squadron, RF Gutzlaw uh, 1974. Um, and that once again is dark sea green, dark grey of light aircraft grey, but without any distemper markings on it. And then underneath here we have got the uh, Harrier T4, T Mark 4 N from 899 uh, Naval Air Squadron, um, and that's 1992. It's in the celebratory um, markings, which is quite nice. Uh, and that's just it says dark sea grey all over. Um, so that'd be quite nice. You could do a bit of shading in there or black basing to get some tonal variation. Um, but the uh, the decals look quite nice. So that's the instructions. Um, relatively simple to follow. Uh, let's have a look at what we've got next. So um, let's have a look at these decals. Um, so decals here, we've actually got two sheets of decals. I'm going to bring that one on top there. Um, basically, um, on the markings for the 50th anniversary one, uh, they originally printed out with the dates, 1942 to 1992. Uh, whereas actually it was seen that it just said 50th anniversary on it, so that's why you got the place of decals there. So the decals here um, they seem quite nice, they seem quite glossy. Uh, I don't know whether we can catch that in the light there. There we go. So quite glossy, not too matte. A um, bit of carrier film on uh, the serial numbers here, yeah, but that's to be expected. Um, but overall, they look really thin. Uh, they don't feel thick at all. They're printed by TechMod. Uh, now TechMod I've heard of but I don't really know much about so I don't know whether they're any good or not. Um, the proof will be in the, the pudding as they say when you uh, put them down. Next we've got some photo etch here um, which I'm not going to get out. Suffice to say that it's made in the Czech Republic and that the serial number here SW72061-62 Harrier T2 T4 um, it looks remarkably similar to another company that makes lots of photo etch and resin and canopy masks which are based in Czech Republic. So if it is Eduard photo etch, which I guess it is, uh, that should bring up quite nicely the aircraft. Um, right, sprues. Okay, so let's get this into here. Um, this is uh, sprue number one. Well, they're not numbered, but it's the first route we're going to view, and this has got the wing section on it, vertical stabs, um, the air intakes, uh, and the nose wheel cockpit, and also a fin here. Sorry. So, um, I was saying, uh, this here shows us the um, the wings and the underwings, vertical stabs, um, tailplanes, and various bits and bobs. First of all, the plastic looks quite nice and shiny. It 
feels quite hard, almost like a Hazagawa type slash Edward type plastic. Um, if you've ever done an Edward kit, you know what I mean. It feels quite shiny, quite hard, doesn't scratch easily. So nice plastic. Um, on the flip side, you can see here we've got ejector pins, which are quite prominent, so they will need to be taken care of. Um, and there's no locating tabs whatsoever, um, but that's fine. Um, you just have to take your time with it. There's a little bit of flash just around here, but nothing that a bit of a sanding stick won't take care of. Um, so nice little sprue there, some nice details. Recess details, um, which I'm hoping I can catch a light there for you. I don't know if I can. Um, nicely done the recess details, not overly pronounced, not too deep, um, quite thin. So long you don't put on really, really thick cakes of primer and paint, um, they should be absolutely fine. You should see them quite nicely. So, second sprue, bringing it in for you. Uh, so on this one we have got, um, on this one we've got the two sides of the fuselage, so um, buttons up from the side. Um, so no sort of nasty seam down the side of the aircraft to take care of, just one on top. Um, we've got our cockpit tubs. Details look quite nice. Once again, some nice fine markings, fine engraved panel lines on the um, on the fuselage here. Um, the wheels look a bit generic. They could probably be better. Um, but overall, it all looks quite nice. Um, I say nice tough plastic again. Um, flipping it around the other side, um, you can see where it's a bit rough on some of the parts, like the um, that exhaust there has got quite a bit of short shot in it, um, but you shouldn't see it anyway because of the way it's going to be hidden. Um, but no, it look, looks all right. Some nice detail here in the um, in the um, in the cockpit side wall. Um, I think it's generic. I don't think it's anything like realistic, but it's there nevertheless, and will take a wash quite nicely. I think so. That's looking rather good. Canopy here, uh, let's get it out so we can see how good it is. I'm going to bring this in once again so we can see whether it's um, creating much distortion with light. Um, I like the fact it's in a separate bag, it's going to stop it from getting scratched. Um, and that's actually quite nice, um, it's quite clear. Yeah, there's been some distortion, of course, there's going to be distortion at this scale, but overall, that's a nice clear canopy. Um, I'd almost go as far as to say hardly any need to dip that and the way it is cut into a few sections you'll be able to pose it open um, so that's nice as well um, if you get it in the open position you'll be able to see that photo etch in the uh, in the kit so that's lovely I'll just pop that back in the bag before I scratch the canopy and then have a hissy fit when I come to build the kit and lastly we've got this tiny little bit of uh, there's in here. Um, don't really think we can see it that much. Let me just bump it like so. There we go. There we go. Um, so it's um, that's all the air brake uh, air brake um, well. <sighs> Failed to the point on this one really because I don't see why they couldn't have done that with injected plastic. I mean whether their moulding process is that they can't get the fine details in it, I don't know. So you've got a casting block on the back which will probably need sanding down a fair bit. Uh, but it, it's there, isn't it? Um, I just, I don't know. Airfix on their Harriers do this in inject, injected plastic and it looks absolutely fine so I don't really know why uh, sort of done that. But it's resin so it's always a bonus. So. There we have the um, the Harrier T2 Mark, well Harrier T Mark 2 slash Mark 2A slash 4 slash 4N from Sword. Um, I'll spin the camera back around and uh, sort of finish up with what my thoughts are on the kit. So guys, that's a, a quick inbox review of the uh, Sword 172 scale Harrier T Mark 2 slash 2A slash 4 slash 4N. And yes, I have tried saying that lots of times to be able to get it together in one sentence.
uh, it's a, a lovely looking little kit uh, quite a lot, of, a lot of detail on the outside of the kit with those fine uh, recessed panel lines uh, you've got the bonus of having a little bit of resin in there and a nice photo etch um, fret to bring up the cockpit um, which is really nice yes it's limited run yes it's going to have some issues on it uh, and I think with kits which are going to have issues uh, actually having a lack of uh, locating tabs and stuff like that is quite useful anyway because you can sort of clamp where you need to or, or sort of like sometimes uh, putting a few little like braces of like plastic card inside or sprue just as and where you need it so I think it's a, I think it's a modeler's kit it's not an assembler's kit if that makes sense um, I think if you just want something quick and easy to throw together and then uh, take the weathering to town this is probably not the right kit for you but if you want a two-seater uh, two-seater harrier early early versions in uh, 70 second scale it's the most detailed kit you're going to have um, it's probably about the only one you can get relatively easily uh, and even that I had to hunt around to get this one quite a bit um, would I recommend it yes I would recommend it to any fans of the Harrier uh, and anybody who's built a few models beforehand I don't think it's anything that can't be uh, sorted with a few basic skills and I think it's an interesting subject, um, especially with that Arctic camo scheme. It looks really nice. So uh, definitely a thumbs up from me. Um, and I look forward to building at some point. Uh, I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to it, but I will do it at some point. Um, in fact, it will be the next Harrier that I'm going to build. Um, and then I'll do the FRS1 afterwards. And then probably going to be the FA2, no, GR5, which I still need to find. But that's another story. Um, so yeah, will be built, so keep your eyes on the channel uh, and the Facebook group. There will be uh, a photo build or a video build of it at some point in the future. When, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> but I will get around to it at some point. So thanks again once uh, for following, uh, for your kind feedback, for all those who sort of following the bench updates the uh, um, and also the builds that I'm doing at the moment. Uh, and um, I'll be doing a few more of these inbox reviews, um, a few kits which are in the stash as I say. Uh, and work my way through the journey. So um, all I've got left to say is thank you very, very much to everybody who's watched the video and everybody who's sort of supported me in the community, whether it be here or on Facebook. Uh, it's really appreciated. Uh, big shout out to Tim Hedworth because he's really, really nice and gives me lots of sort of feedback and stuff like that. And Martin Lamont as well. Uh, these two guys, uh, I'll pop a couple of links into their channel underneath this video. They're, they're really nice um, and well worth a look at if you haven't already got them on your watch list. So with that, all I've got left to say is happy modeling, guys. Uh, thank you once again, and see you soon. Bye.